Hey what's up everybody, in today's video we're gonna talk about responsive web design. Responsive design is a very important topic that every front-end developer and designer should know of. One of my previous videos was about CSS media queries, which is an important part of making a website responsive, and that video which I talked about media queries is currently the second most watched in my own channel. It is getting so much interest from you guys, so I decided to make a broader video about responsive design. What I would like to show you guys is that I have created a very simple web page here, but it is not yet responsive. And in this video, we're gonna turn this web page into a responsive web page step by step. Even if I try to simplify this video for beginners, it will be a quick cover, so I am not quite sure whether everybody can understand that. But if you guys need an in-depth tutorial of responsive design with more details and information to be explained, please reply to this question and let me know in the comment section below. So now if you are ready, let's get started. So here on the left side of the screen, you can see the website of GitHub. And on the right side is my example web page. How do we understand whether a web page is responsive or not? The first approach is that when I pull this border and make the size smaller for the GitHub, what we can see is that the website responds to the new size and fits itself to a smaller or a larger screen, very nice and smooth. However, if I do the same thing for our page, we see that it doesn't respond to the new size and every element partially disappears from the view and a horizontal scroll bar appears here down below because basically there is not enough space for the page and this means that our page is not responsive. And the second approach is that we can basically visit a website on a tablet or a mobile phone and we can see how the design looks. If there is an ugly view, like here on the right side, then it means that the site is not responsive and this unfortunately leads many users to stop visiting the page immediately. So that's why responsive design is very important and today's developers and also designers must know the concept of responsive design. Okay, so now let's start making our website responsive. The very first step we need to do is to add some meta about viewport to HTML head section. Let me explain why it is necessary. Currently I switched to Firefox because there is a nice feature I would like to show. And one of the best features of developer tools of a browser like Chrome or Firefox, whatever you use is that it generates an example view of the current web page that how it would look in a selected device. And to do that, we just need to go and open the developer tools and then click on this icon here. And when we click on that, now it has switched to a device like iPhone 6, 7 or 8. Currently we are here and we can pick any option from here. Now each device has a width and also our desktop browser, like when we go back, it also has a width. And when we try to visit this page on a mobile device, for example, like iPhone 6, then it squeezes and tries to fit exactly this view on a much smaller device. And as you can see, it makes much harder to read or to click on a link or a button maybe because everything is much smaller. However, when we add the viewport information here, it will align the width of the browser to any device's width. So let me show how to do that. We basically need to come to the head section and type here meta to add additional information inside the meta tag and define a name as viewport. And after that, we're gonna write the content attribute. And now we need to assign the width property to any device width. So this option will assign any device width to the current width. And also we can define the initial scale as one which means that the current zooming option. Click on save. Okay, now let's refresh it. I go back. Now we are back on the same device and now as we can see, the page got a lot bigger 
in the same device. I won't go more further into details of viewport, but one last thing I would like to show is that you don't even have to memorize this code here. I mean, you can find this anywhere on the internet, but if you are using VS Code, there is a shortcut for creating an empty HTML template with the exclamation mark and then click enter. If you use this shortcut, it will automatically add the necessary viewport information to the head of the HTML. So you don't have to memorize it and deal with it every single time when you start a new empty HTML template. The second step for making a website responsive is to making the layout of the web page more fluid. So for example, when I drag this and resize it to a smaller screen, what we see is that a horizontal scroll bar appears here. So let's see how we can fix this. When I go here and check the written CSS code, what I see is that there are some defined fixed sized widths. And since these widths are defined as, for example, 800 pixels, every time the size of the screen, we can see it up here, is less than 800 and the width of these elements have a fixed defined width, there is not enough space and so that's why this horizontal scroll bar appears. But this means that the website is not responsive. So what we can do here is that to change these widths, rather than using fixed size pixels, we can use, for example, percentage. And the percentage will always take, regardless the size of the screen, the same percentage of the, of the width of the page. So let's refactor this code a little bit. What I need to do is that, Actually, we don't need this height here. I need to change all of these fixed size widths into a percentage and then let's see if that works. For example, the first one is this container. We can also see it here. And when I open the menu, there are some defined child elements and they are all under this container. So let me change this to 100% and it should always fit into this screen size. Save it. And as we can see, now all of these elements are fitted inside this small area. And what also important is that when you start writing code, you should try to use always like relative CSS units like percentage or also some of the other units rather than defining fixed size pixels for, for layout. For a responsive website, it should always be relative units, so the website will be more fluid. Okay, now let's continue with refactoring, and this time, this is the main image, which, which is probably under the image container, and it also has a fixed width, so I will also change this to 100%. And it looks much better now. We can see the whole image at once in our page. The image also adjusts its height regardless of the size of the uh, screen. But as we can see, the horizontal scroll is still there. So let's continue. Okay, the next one is the footer, the list of the footer probably. So let me also change this to 100%. Okay. And as we can see, now also the footer has adjusted itself to the current size. And now as we can see, the horizontal scroll bar has disappeared because our website is more fluid now. Let me also check this in another device, like an iPad. As we can see, it looks now much, much better. And also we can see the same like in an iPhone, for example. Now the whole page fits itself to the size of the screen and it looks much better. But there is also a bunch of work to do here. For example, these cards are just left aligned and there is a white space here, which is not really good. So we can align this. And also, for example, the headline here is way too big for a mobile device. So how can we write code that it fits itself based on different devices? There is a very nice CSS feature that which I also talked in another video of mine, which is the CSS media queries and media queries will be our next step. So this is our navigation menu, but I will do that in the following video because it takes a lot of time. Our image looks good, but actually the headline is way too big. So let's make it smaller. Let's say 20. 
Okay, it's a bit smaller. Let's make it like, I don't know, 30. Okay, now it looks much better. The next problem is that there is like no empty space between the text and the and the border of the device. So I will so I would like to give a padding of let's say 10 pixels. Okay, looks better. Now we have some white space here. The next thing we can do is to centralize these cards here and give some also give some space because there isn't any and it doesn't look good. And what I would like to do is to give some bigger margins, like let's say 10 pixels. And also I would like to centralize those cards. So I go back to the parent element and I already defined a margin auto, but it didn't work. So let's also do this with a text align. And as we can see, now the cards are centered and the footer is not looking really good so let's also change this what i would like to do is to change this code to realign as vertical rather than horizontal so let's delete this one and now the list is vertical maybe it's better to give a little bit of padding 5 pixels for top and bottom and 10 pixels for left and right okay now it looks much better now our website looks a lot better in the mobile view and now let's continue with larger devices. So till here, what we did is that just refactoring the CSS code for the mobile view. And now let's continue with larger screens. So let's switch to iPad. Okay, now as we can see, it still looks fine, but we can just do little adjustments here. For example, this headline is a bit small and the footer we can switch it back to a horizontal view so let's do this now the media queries comes into play so at media screen and now we are going to define the breakpoint of 786 pixels so this is our breakpoint and starting from this width size we can apply our rules so let's say i am going to make this headline bigger and what I need to do is that I need to copy this rule here and change the font size to, let's say, to 45 pixels. Okay, so as we can see, now the headline gets bigger. And next, let's switch this footer back to a horizontal line. So I'm going to copy the item class and add here a display of inline block. And actually, we don't need this padding anymore because we already have it. Now our footer is back to a horizontal list. And when I switch back to a mobile view, it's again back to a vertical list. So this is how we can use media queries in an efficient way. So now we have also aligned our code for iPad. And finally, let's also adjust the code for, for desktop. And now I'm going to switch to full screen. Okay, so I am now at full screen. The image is way too big. So what I'm going to do is to make this image smaller. This time, let's say we are going to have a minimum width of 1200 pixels. These are mostly standard breakpoints, but they can change in time. So it's up to you which one to take. And here I am going to define the container and the image container. And I'm going to give a width for, let's say, 80%. And also the image container should have a width of 80%. We go back. Okay, now it's a bit smaller. And now let's also align it in the middle. And now, as we can see, the image is a bit smaller and it has aligned in the middle, but it's still way too big. So I'm going to make it more smaller, let's say 60%. Okay, now it looks much better. So once we have larger screens, then the image size gets smaller and will be aligned in the middle. Let's also change the size and see if that's working. So if the screen size is less than, is smaller than 1200 pixels, then the image will be back to full size. And when I resize this screen, our website responds to it and it looks much better now. Responsive design is actually a broader topic to cover. 
This was just a basic introduction, but we achieved to turn the website into a responsive website. In the following video, we are going to make a responsive navigation menu. So thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.